Good morning and welcome to church. Rachel Sterlace here and I'm the worship leader here at Grace and Community. And today I get to share with you the second value out of the 11 that we've been talking about. Today's value is worship. You know, we value anointed and prophetic corporate worship. The Bible tells us to worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. We value God-focused, anointed, prophetic worship. We believe that worship lends towards expressing the heart of God and preparing our hearts to know, understand, and express him to others. It is our passion to lead all into the presence of God so that he might touch us and we touch him as we glorify his name. We love that we get to engage in corporate worship. Worship, of course, must take place on a personal, individual level, but there is something special and holy when the family of God comes together, worship Him together in unity. Worship is ultimately giving praise, thanks, and glory back to God. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. But it's so much more than that. God is gracious enough to send his spirit down to bless us when we enter into worship. And from that, there are three things that I believe the Lord wants us to experience when we engage in worship. The first is intimacy. Jesus wants us to draw close to himself, to experience and feel his presence, his love, his peace, his joy. And oftentimes he will speak to our hearts when we are having intimate moments in his presence. This aspect of worship needs to be personal. As Isaiah 29, 13 says what the Lord is saying, that these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based merely on human rules they've been taught. Don't just go through the motions of worship. Press in. Allow your heart to connect with God's. Do what it takes to get to this place. Clear your mind, close your eyes. Church, this is a safe place to get personal with God. Even in a room full of many other people, God wants to be intimate with you personally during worship. The second point is power. God wants to fill us with his holy boldness, his passion and strength to live the best that we can for him. This comes from being ready to receive from him during worship. And if there is something you need his wonder-working power for, worship is the place to go. Psalm 29, 9 to 11 says, And in his temple all cry, Glory, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. You know, church, there shouldn't be anything stopping us from receiving God's mighty power and walking in it. And finally, the third point is freedom. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians. And finally, that third point is freedom. Second Corinthians 3.17 says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If the spirit of God is here in worship, we better be experiencing freedom. And if we're experiencing freedom, we need to be expressing it. Whether it's raising your hands, clapping, dancing, shouting, waving a flag, it may look different for everybody. You know, freedom could be so many things. We all need freedom. It may be a release from bondage and addiction, maybe freedom from physical or emotional pain. Freedom when you finally just let go and surrender yourself to God. Church, let's worship the Lord together this morning. Let's give him praise and glory and let's experience his presence in a fresh and dynamic way. God bless.